With the um, increasing numbers of immunocompromised patients as a result of more and more bone marrow transplantation procedures, organ transplantation procedures, and uh, more patients with AIDS around the world, we're seeing a larger variety and a larger number of fungal infections. And this is producing uh, difficulties in management because many of these infections don't respond to any one antifungal agent. In this program, Dr. David Denning discusses a procedure which greatly improves diagnosis of such infections. The procedure, percutaneous transthoracic needle biopsy, or fine needle biopsy, is demonstrated and described by Dr. Rob Bissett. Now don't breathe, just stop breathing for me. Breathe away. There are a number of uh, diagnostic approaches to um, uh, pulmonary infections in immunocompromised patients. Um, with respect to the diagnosis of fungal infections, uh, sputum culture is relatively insensitive and sputum may not be produced. Um, nasal culture um, may be helpful in diagnosing aspergillus infections. Uh, bronchoscopy has a yield of approximately 45% um, with cytology, but this falls on culture to around 35%. Blood culture is not useful. Um, as it has a yield of less than 5%. Um, fine needle um, biopsy has not been used very much in Europe, um, but, the, uh, but this is a standard approach in North America, and its yield varies with, uh, from one host group to another. The, the patients at greatest risk for mold infections uh, include um, patients with profound and persistent neutropenia, for whatever reason, in, um, after chemotherapy or aplastic anemia, um, bone marrow transplant patients, um, and also patients who've undergone solid organ transplants, particularly liver and heart and lung transplant patients are at a great risk. And recently we've seen a much greater incidence of aspergillus infections in AIDS patients as they've been living longer, and they've also had more problems with neutropenia uh, or requirements of corticosteroids for other reasons. Um, filamentous uh, organisms causing disease in immunocompromised patients include aspergillus species in 80 to 90 percent of cases, um, the mucorales in 5 to 10 percent of cases, and the, there are a number of rather uh, more unusual organisms which occasionally cause disease, including Fusarium, Trichosporin, Blastus schizomyces, Neocardia, and Pneumocystis, and Candida species if patients are not given uh, effective anti-candle prophylaxis. Um, this may vary from um, uh, site to site around Europe uh, and in North America and um, so that for example Fusarium um, and Trichosporin appear to be uncommon in the UK but more common in Italy and Aspergillus is probably more common in the UK. The um, type of patient in whom um, a needle biopsy of the lung is appropriate is a patient who has a peripheral uh, lesion in the lung which is not amenable to diagnosis by uh, transbronchial biopsy and may not yield uh, an answer by bronchoalveolar lavage. Um, there are uh, a number of examples of, of this. The um, patients who are thrombocytopenic uh, this may be a problem in, but in fact the incidence of bleeding in patients with very low platelet counts is low, and in many of these patients platelet transfusions can be overcome this problem. Here are some examples in which the needle biopsy of the lung was helpful in making the diagnosis. This is an x-ray of a patient with chronic lymphocytic leukemia, and you can see a large nodule in the mid uh, part of the right lung, and a need the needle biopsy uh, grew two different species of aspergillus from this nodule. He responded well to therapy. Uh, this is another example from a patient with AIDS. Um, here you have a large lesion in the apex of the left lung with some cavitation suggestive of, of aspergillus. Um, it's also next to the pleura as can be better seen on the CT scan and a needle biopsy of this lesion established the diagnosis and he also responded to therapy. Um, this is another example from a patient with AIDS. Uh, here you have a thin-walled uh, cavitary infiltrate in the apex of the right lung. The doctors looking after him thought he probably had as, uh, tuberculosis, um, but a needle biopsy showed that this was in fact uh, aspergillus, and he responded well to therapy as well. 
There are some instances in which the, um, this is not the right approach, and, uh, or not a very useful approach, and this is such an example. This is a leukemic patient um, who had bilateral fine infiltrates, uh, which were subsequently proven to be due to aspergillus, but there's nothing to biopsy here, and this patient perhaps would be better uh, having a bronchoscopy or other methods of making the diagnosis. So, Rob, this was a, uh, an, an x-ray of, of an AIDS patient who had fever for about two months. A bronchoscopy was negative. He was unresponsive to antibiotics. And we came to you and asked you if you could help us make a diagnosis. Perhaps you could comment on, on how you did the procedure in, in this patient and uh, how you do it generally. Well, this is quite a straightforward uh, biopsy. As you can see, the patient has really quite dense consolidation peripherally in the left upper zone. And this was visible on ultrasonography. Now, if you can see consolidated lung with ultrasound, then you can actually stick a needle straight into it without going through aerated lung. And then your chance of a pneumothorax is very low. In this patient, we raised the arm above his head to allow his access through the axilla. We could see the consolidation here without any great difficulty. And I tried, first of all, uh, two passes with a, an 18-gauge Francine needle. and didn't get a great deal of tissue. Uh, so I then simply made a couple of passes uh, with a standard true-cut biopsy needle. Uh, getting very good cores of tissue. The patient had no trouble afterwards, no complications, uh, and it was really quite straightforward. It's more difficult to take tissue from deep inside the thorax. Here you can see one that we're going to do this morning. Uh, here you can see uh, a patient, this isn't an infected uh, case this morning, but you can see the patient has a mass at the right hilum, uh, which has probably paralyzed the right hemidiaphragm, which is elevated. Uh, here you can see that the mass actually comes quite forwards in the thorax and there's very little aerated lung between the mass uh, and the anterior chest wall. In this case I'm going to do a biopsy from about here down into the mass. I don't want to go down the side of the sternum because that would put me dangerously close to the aorta should the patient jump and they often do jump a little when you traverse the pleura which is quite painful. So yeah. tell me about the needles that you use Rob. Uh, well, uh, the, the needle depends very much on the biopsy that you're trying to take. If I'm going into consolidation where I want a lot of tissue out and I want specimens for a lot of different labs, then generally the cutting needle, such as the true cut, is a better sort of needle. Now you can get these in 18 gauge and you can get them fired by automatic guns which give you very good tissue cores. Uh, so for, con for consolidation, for infection, the cutting needle like a true cut uh, is the best needle to use. For tumour, or for more solid lesions, then you often get the best sample with a Francine type of lung biopsy needle, which is an aspiration needle uh, with multiple fine points on the end. And this needle is simply passed through repeatedly through the area of interest uh, whilst making a circular twisting action, aspirating into a syringe. And you can really go on doing that for a minute or two, making multiple passes whilst aspirating cores into the syringe. Some people use a constant suction device rather than a syringe, but this is a matter of personal preference. And these are the, really the only two needles I would consider because they work very well for me, but there are lots of other needles on the market that other people find equally satisfactory. What we're going to do first of all is just do a quick ultrasound scan of your tummy because if we can see anything in the tummy, it's far easier to take tissue out of the tummy than out of the chest. Okay. When we check that that's normal, what we're going to do is freeze the skin. You're not allergic to any anaesthetics? No. no, I use the same stuff that the dentist uses. I'll put quite a bit into the chest wall. We're going to freeze the skin so that you don't feel too much, and then just slide a fine needle into the chest. Now, you'll feel a sharpness as it goes into the chest because I can't put too much anaesthetic down around the lining of the chest. Okay. No. Uh, Try not to breathe, try and keep still as you can. I'm sure you'll do fine. I'll give you precise instructions as we go. I always check the abdomen with ultrasound before a biopsy. I usually fast the patients for two hours so that the procedure is performed on an empty stomach, but I don't routinely use sedation as I rely on patient cooperation during the procedure. Most patients have had a bronchoscopy and approximately a third of them have had chest CT scanning. All the patients have had hemoglobin, platelet count and prothrombin times checked before the biopsy, but in our experience, quite prolonged prothrombin time and low platelet counts haven't been a problem. As the procedure is performed under local anaesthetic, I talk to the patient during the biopsy to reassure them, to keep them informed and to tell them exactly what's going on. Now all I'm doing at the moment is just looking for the best place to go into the chest. I use a needle or scalpel blade to mark the 
optimum site for entry for the biopsy needle and screen these into position. It's worth spending some time choosing the best route of entry for the needle in order to traverse as little aerated lung as possible. A little bit of anaesthetic into the skin. It's going to sting and then it'll go numb, okay? Little jab coming just now. That's it. I give local anaesthetic quite generously so that the patient feels as little as possible during the biopsy, though the patient may feel a sharpness when the needle traverses the pleura. That's it. I'll just check the position of that. That's fine. This is well for me. We will be finished in a minute or two now. Right. Now, I'm just going to... That's it. So that's where I'm going to go. Vertically down. You're going to feel a little bit of pressure in the chest wall now. Whilst the patient may feel discomfort as the needle crosses the pleura, most patients find the procedure less uncomfortable than bronchoscopy. Avoiding pleural fissures within the chest allows the biopsy to be taken with the needle crossing the pleura only once, thus reducing the incidence of pneumothorax. Whilst pneumothorax is the most frequent problem we encounter, only 50% of patients show evidence of a pneumothorax on a chest x-ray taken four hours after the procedure. The majority of these pneumothoraces are small and only 4% of our patients have required chest drains. Right. Very still sharpness coming now. Breathe away gently. That's it, and there we are, we're just on the edge. Right, that's fine. Right, can we go into lateral screening, please? Having the ability to screen the patient laterally during the biopsy is a distinct advantage allowing the accurate gauging of depth, but it is not essential and biopsies can be taken on standard barium screening tables. You just stop breathing for me. Breathe away. Don't breathe. Breathe away. With the aspiration needle, a single pass through the pleura allows multiple passes through the area for biopsy. That's it, and that should be us done. Are you okay? Once you've taken the biopsy, or in some cases multiple biopsies, what do you, what do, you do with the tissue then? Uh, this depends very much on the reason for the biopsy. When I'm doing cases for you, uh, aspirating tissue for infection, I need samples not only for histology, but also for standard bac bacteriology, for fungal culture, for virology, and for TB culture. So I need large specimens. Those are aspirated straight into saline. The sample for histology is immediately placed into formaldehyde, the remaining specimens remaining in saline until they're placed into the special culture mediums uh, for that particular test. Uh, whilst aspirating tissue, uh, looking for tumour, I aspirate straight into formaldehyde. After a needle biopsy for suspected infection, specimens are sent to the histopathology and microbiology laboratories. The sample for histology is then fixed, cut and stained with haematoxylin and eosin. Other routine stains include Gram stain, Zeal Nielsen or ZN stain and fungal stains. Here, Dr. Godfrey Wilson examines the biopsy sample obtained from the AIDS patient discussed earlier. This is pretty representative of the amount of material that can be obtained by needle biopsy. At low power, several fragments are present, and the largest of these has a configuration um, typical of that produced by needle biopsy. At a higher power, one can see alveolar spaces separated by inflamed interstitial tissue. Elsewhere in, in this particular area, there is acute inflammatory material and also necrotic tissue. There is also 
uh, areas of fibrosis. But in this biopsy, there is no evidence of granulometer or other specific features. Fungal stains on this biopsy were negative. However, the gram stain was interesting because it showed throughout all the fragments um, long filamentous organisms which are gram positive and also showed some branching. These organisms also weakly stained with acid fast stains, the appearances therefore being in keeping with those of Nicardia. With respect to the microbiology, the whole specimen is placed into sterile saline and that is transported to the lab. The sample is then centrifuged and the pellet resuspended in, in the saline and distributed among a number of different media and in addition a, um, a gram stain and an acid fast stain is usually done on that material. The media that it's important to um, distribute the specimen between include blood agar, uh, chocolate agar, uh, a tuberculous medium such as an LJ slant and uh, BYCE uh, or Legionella uh, media. Uh, if there is enough specimen, then other media that should be considered uh, include a McConkey or Cled um, agar for gram negative organisms, a Bactec uh, TB bottle, um, chopped meat for anaerobes, um, and other fungal media, including BHI. Needle biopsy offers significant advantages because a, a definitive microbiological diagnosis can be achieved in many cases. It should be possible to process the a cytology specimen within a few hours um, and histologically um, after fixing a, a result within 24 hours would be appropriate. Um, the gram stain and acid fast stain may yield an answer very rapidly within uh, one or two hours and um, the cultures vary of course depending on what sort of organism is grown. Uh, typically most organisms will grow within two or three days Occasionally, there are much slower growing organisms, such as uh, Mycobacterium tuberculosis or other atypical mycobacteria, and uh, this may take longer. The fine needle biopsy is a relatively safe procedure that may save patients other invasive procedures, such as an open lung biopsy. If one can establish a definitive diagnosis um, microbiologically, this allows uh, planning of primary therapy of main and maintenance therapy and also, in patients who are failing therapy, the biopsy can be repeated, and if a culture is positive, then this clearly indicates failure of therapy, and that is an indication to change the therapy. It's also helpful because one can susceptibility test isolates from this procedure. So the, the needle biopsy represents another useful technique in the diagnosis of pulmonary infection in the immunocompromised patient.